with all the news of food and medical shortage, when we think of antibiotics, that's a big part of our life and it keeps us healthy. What are some things such as foods and herbal remedies and other herbs that we can turn around and look to, to not only give us medicinal benefits and health and have natural antibiotics, but also be good for our health to help stay healthy and not get sick. So let's jump into a list of 10 items that you need to have today. You need to buy, you need to stockpile, put up just in case when we can't go to the doctor, when we can't eat very good, when we turn around and add these herbs, add these things to our diet, we are making strides to be good, healthy, and also heal some of the things that could be going wrong with us. So let's jump into this list. Today's gonna to be a good video and it starts right now. Welcome to Mississippi, where literally it was 80 yesterday and then wind come in through the night and now it is literally 44 this morning. So it is cold, but a beautiful, beautiful morning. Love hearing the birds chirp, all the animals are fed, and uh, we're hoping for a good day. So before we start doing our normal farm work, we need to discuss 10 foods and herbs that we need to stop hauling by. We talked about spices last week, but the importance of having a strong pantry helps us stay healthy, but also treat any sickness that we may have. For instance, we've heard antibiotics being in shortage. Now, if you want some antibiotics, definitely look at places like Jace Medical. There's a link below, and you can buy some survival style antibiotics to put up for safekeeping. We have several sets of them. But when it comes to our health, we need to understand that sometimes if we can't get antibiotics, what are some herbs that we can utilize, that learn to use and do them wisely to add to our diets, but also to treat almost like an antibiotic to help us get through maybe some tougher times. So let's jump into that list right now. Number one is thyme. Now this is one herb that we actually struggle growing. Uh, it does well in our greenhouse, but every time we take it out of the greenhouse, it seems like it kind of struggles. So if you're growing all these herbs, that's great. If you're having to buy these, that's okay too. A lot of herbs are not very expensive when you buy them in the dried form. If we grow them, we freeze dry or dehydrate. So please understand that you can buy or grow these. So let's jump into thyme. Thyme has a natural makeup that is very good for being an antibiotic. It is good for salmonella, E. coli, any kind of digestive infections that we could possibly have. Most of the time with time, people will make some kind of mouthwash or some kind of drink. Sometimes it could be a hot tea. Sometimes it could be something just like a simple uh, mix and make syrup, kind of like we do with elderberry syrup. But this is very good when it comes to our digestion, uh, gastritis, uh, tummy aches, any kind of situation that we're having dealing with our digestive system, time could be a great natural antibiotic for us. Now we can add this to meals each and every day that we live because it's very yummy tasting. However, if it comes down to it and you now have started developing some of these issues, look at ways that you can use this as a natural remedy, mixing, making, making a syrup, making a teacher. This is a very good herb to have on hand. Number two is lavender. Everybody loves the smell of lavender. Lavender is one of those common fragrances that we have. But lavender being an herb or essential oil is very good for us when it comes to antibiotics. When we make soaps or when we make salves, Misty is excellent at that. She'll make lavender based things and that helps with skin scrapes. That helps with irritations on the skin. So lavender is not something that we're gonna ingest, we're gonna actually put on our skin. Think of staph infections. Now, staph infections, if you're serious, you need to go to a doctor or hospital or take a true antibiotic. But if it's one of those situations, what if you can't? What if you cannot take care of it that way? Lavender would be great because it's antimicrobial. You can make a salve out of it and then start using it on those infected spots. It can be very good for skin healing, skin irritant, and also healing some of those staph issues you may be having on your skin. Number three would be oregano. Oregano has an active ingredient called Carvacrol which could help target any kind of bad microorganisms or microbes. The cool thing about this active ingredient is it is good healing power, but unlike a true antibiotic, 
it does not push away microbes and also make it more resistant to true antibiotics. So you can take this over and over. You can use this in your diet. You're not really looking at the oregano plant as much as you're looking at the oregano oils that it produces out of the oregano plant. So I would challenge you if you're growing oregano or you're drying oregano, learn how to make an oil out of it and learn how to, to take all those good ingredients and active ingredients out of the oregano and make sure you are using this wisely. A lot of times people ingest it just like they would uh, oregano. So there's definitely benefits of just having oregano and having it in your diet. Definitely, if you're using Italian meals, we love it in our spaghetti, uh, on our garlic breads, anything like that, we're adding oregano too. But learn how to take it and get the benefits out of it. If it's making tinctures, if it's making essential oils out of it, this is extremely good for a cold and cough. If we're getting sick, add oregano or oregano oil to your diet. Make sure we are naturally fighting off and not building some kind of bad resistance against other sicknesses. Remember, Oregano oil is a good thing to have. Oregano is a good thing to have in your diet. Number four is sage. Now sage, every time I think of sage, I think of sausage. I think of kind of the holiday seasons, the cool weather. I love thinking of it making sausage. We use it in our sausage now. But sage is actually a natural antibiotic. It's very good to fight off things like strep. It's, it's good for our cough and our respiratory. Say you have infections. Say you have a, a mouth infection. Say you have something going on in your mouth that could cause a lot of issues. Gargle some kind of sage or sage water. Make a poultice out of it. Sage is really good for things like that. Skin rashes, boils, that poultice would be great for that. Look into sage. It's good to have, not only to ingest and eat and make in your sausage, but it's really good for a natural antibiotic. Number five is echinacea. We've talked about echinacea a lot. We use it in our elderberry syrup. It is all about respiration. It is all about uh, cold and cough. If you think you have a fl the flu uh, and you have no antibiotics to fight that, Echinacea is a great thing to make a tincture out of or you can drop it under your tongue or if it's something like uh, you want to add it to a syrup and you're going to be drinking it like uh, elderberry syrup. Both of those ways we actually have echinacea. The echinacea is also a pretty easy thing to grow. Another benefit to echinacea, and we call them a comb flower, you'll see it in layman's terms as a comb flower, put them in your yard to grow. They're beautiful. They, they go this beautiful purple flower usually, and bees and all kind of pollinators love them. They're great. You can use the root, you can use the leaves, you can use the flower. There's all kind of ways you can use echinacea. It's a great part of an herbal garden, but also if you happen to buy the echinacea, buy the echinacea leaf, echinacea root, you can purchase that in bulk and save some money. It's excellent when it comes to cold and flu season this is something that we practice take daily and weekly all the time during this season not because we're sick but because we're trying to hedge off that sickness a great antibiotic coneflower echinacea number six is basil basil when we think of basil again the smell of basil we love growing basil we love smelling it and we put it in the dehydrator it is a, a very aromatic herb but it's also so good for our health when it comes to thinking of antibiotics it is shown to help with E. coli bacteria, respiratory systems, and urinary tract infections. It's also shown to help earaches. So you can make like maybe a, a droplet out of it or make some kind of oil out of it to be able to utilize and help our ears. So you have acne, say you have cuts, abrasions, all that by making poultices or creams, using basil in that would be, would be very helpful again for our skin. The benefit to a lot of these, if you look at them, a lot of them deal with digestive health and, and and, and bacteria getting into our bodies and, and, and trying to build a hedge of protection around that. If we would learn to eat better and eat better quality foods and start using some of these herbs and some of the spices that we talked about in the last video, if we learn to do some of that, I think we would realize our diet would help us be more healthy where we would have to stay off the true pharmaceutical medicines. Going back wearing my tinfoil hat, if we would just clean our diet up and get away from the trash food that we have put ourselves into enjoying all the time the convenience foods of town food and processed food if we go back to a good diet where we have our meats our veggies our carbs and then turn around and add some of these spices and herbs to it i believe we're going to build a healthier society where we're not dependent on pharmaceuticals personally number seven is truly one of my favorites it's actually one of my favorite herbs to actually eat it is rosemary active ingredients in rosemary is meant to fight against e coli listeria salmonella staph, strep, 
even down to helping with cuts, abrasions, and even nasal and sinus infections. Now, a lot of these, if you hear, have a lot of the same characteristics. It is amazing how God made antibiotics basically in our grounds and we can grow these herbs to do more than just consume or to sell to someone. We need to see the value in these herbs. If you can heal your body of staph and strep and E. coli and make your body more resistant to fight off all this sickness that we deal with in our world, then we're not gonna have to face a lot of the issues that we're facing. When we start taking true antibiotics, we become uh, less resistant against other strains that hit us. That's why people get uh, shots over and over. That's why people have to get on medicine so much. If we learn to build this stuff in our body, a lot of these are not resistant. They don't make antibiotic resistance. They're natural. So they're good for us to build a natural resistance to make our body stronger. Check into rosemary. Not only is it just great smelling and aromatic and you could utilize it especially on steak and chicken because that's that's where it's at but we actually have rosemary oil too and we'll utilize it if you want to make a tincture out of this you can turn around and use a, a liquor and build a true tincture out of it and then you've got a powerful antibiotic in your cupboard in your pantry number eight is fennel seed now fennel is not something i actually like it actually i don't even like the taste of it i don't even like the smell of it but that doesn't mean I can't take it. That doesn't mean I can't utilize it because it is good for our health. A lot of times people will say, just take a spoonful of fennel. It's good to clear up our cough. It's good for gingivitis and our mouth care. It makes our breath smell better, which I don't, I don't know if I like the smell of fennel, but it may make your breath smell better too. It's studies show that it is very strong in antimicrobials and the ingredients that it has, and it helps heal our body, especially when it comes to mouth care. Again, back to digestive issues, it's very good for our health. As I stated before, when we clean our diets up, it helps our digestive system move like it's supposed to, and we don't have the issues that a lot of people develop when they start eating bad foods and not having true good quality food spices or herbs going into the body. Make a tea out of it. Sip it, gargle it, spit it out if you don't like the taste, or let it go down because it's good for cough, it's good for suppression, it's also good for our digestive system. Make sure you have fennel. Fennel is not one a lot of people talk about but it's very good to have on hand. Now, the last two things we're gonna be talking about is not dealing with the herbs itself, it's dealing with how to apply these herbs or utilize these herbs. Number nine would be honey. Honey is a staple on our farm. It lasts for a lifetime, so buy a monster supply. A natural, unfiltered, raw honey from a local provider. For instance, we have honeybees, so we grow our own honey and we'll produce anywhere, or we won't produce, the bees will produce anywhere from 15 to 25 gallons of honey a year. Now, we may sell some just off a of farm, off farm, but our goal for our honey is the quality of it is it allows us to have a natural sugar. It doesn't go bad, and you can utilize it when you're talking about building teas, when you're talking about building tinctures, when you're talking about building poultices, and you're talking about building some kind of saps, honey is very good in every aspect of our diet and on our skin or in our body. The properties of honey not only is good for our allergies and sinus and respiratory to add to all these things, but it allows you to combine them with a lot of these herbs and to help you take these herbs in. So another item, number 10, would be liquor. Now, I don't drink, we don't drink here, but for instance, having a vodka or an Everclear clear something with a high index or high volume you need to make sure your proof is up to vodka and ever clear levels to build those herbal tinctures now tinctures are something that you need to learn and make sure you're doing it very safe and understanding aging and auburn glassware and keeping them in a uh, controlled environment but building tinctures is the way that you can truly have medicine and a lot of these herbs that we have we personally use in tincture form we actually make them in jars with the, the liquor and then turn around and put them in smaller auburn glass droplet uh, droplet jars so we can utilize them a little bit better and a little bit easier look into honey and liquor being a major part of your medicine cabinet and building a quality health. Again, I'm not saying buy liquor to drink. That's not what I'm talking about. It is a great bartering asset to have one day because people do have vices. People do have needs for a, a liquor, but that's not what I'm talking about here. I'm talking about add it to your cabinet for spices and herbs because now you're able to build the medicines and the tinctures that you are needing to stay healthy, to be healthy. And when you're not healthy, it allows you to get healthy by taking these as a natural antibiotic. Now say for instance, again, you want the pharmaceutical kind. 
Look at Jace Medical. Look at a company who believes in a parallel economy where you can buy, not from a local pharmacist or doctor in town, look at a company who is wanting to help you come straight to your home very discreet where no one knows what it is. Look at Jace Medical. But when it comes to herbal remedies and having some knowledge, get a good quality book on herbal remedies, foraging and herbs and how to use them. Study it, learn it, keep it with all your herbs just in case you ever need it. You are now building homemade medicines to help you resist all the sickness that we deal with every day in our world. So the sun is definitely in my eyes. You can see it from the last few clips. Thank you so much for being here. I hope this video does help. I love hearing and seeing the birds. I love seeing these cows. And if we can stay healthy and understand our body's needs of true good quality food, good herbs, good spices, but then on top of that, if we still get sick, we learn to build resistance and build great quality natural antibiotics from things God gives us to grow right here on these grounds. If we can do that, then we can be healthier. We're not dependent on pharmaceuticals and, it, and being able to be healthy for all the things that sometimes gets thrown at us daily. Guys, thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. Please know we're gonna be giving away thousands of dollars worth of gifts. Once we hit 200,000, we're gonna be doing a giveaway. So please, if you're not subscribed to the Max, go down here, subscribe and ring the bell. And here's another thing. Even if you don't win some of these gifts, which there's there's tons to win. There's over $5,000 worth of gifts. So, so please uh, subscribe for that. But every month past that, we're gonna be giving away a gift to our subscribers as just a thank you. So please subscribe below. Let us know what you think about this channel. Let, you, let us know that you are subscribed to our channel. If you're not, go down here, click subscribe, and let us know that you just subscribed. Thank you so much for watching. God bless you. Have a wonderful day today. Happy homestead, y'all.